everyone. I'm excited to share a little bit about our archives today. I wanted to first start off by just talking a little bit about the museum site for anyone who's not familiar. So the Rochester Hills Museum at Van Heusen Farm is a 16-acre, eight-building museum complex. Uh, so we have a lot of different buildings, and we actually have a lot of archives and collections in a variety of our buildings. Uh, we also function a little bit like a community center, so we hold uh, programs like this one today. Um, we host weddings. Uh, we do all kinds of events in our calf barn, and then we also have exhibits in our dairy barn as well. Um, and we, um, we are celebrating the bicentennial of Stony Creek Village, which is the little village where the museum is located. So it's very exciting for us, and um, it's been fun to dive into the archives and do more research on that. And I want to talk a little bit about my role here. I find a lot of people actually don't know what an archivist is, or they might get it confused. Um, I really love this quote by Lisa Lewis. She says, archivists bring the past to the present. They are record collectors and protectors, keepers of memory. They organize unique historical materials, making them available for current and future research. So that is pretty much what I do here at the museum. Um, one of the biggest things that I'm involved in is collecting local history material to add to our collections. So I get to work with the community, which is really fantastic. The majority of what we have in our archives and collections have been donated um, by community members or past community members. And then once everything is on site here, I have to go through and make sure that it is around for years to come. So we take preservation and storage very seriously. We put our items in archival boxes, like the one I have on this table. We typically wear gloves when we are handling all of our items. And um, although we take these um, measures to preserve all of our items, I think the most important part of my job is to make sure I'm not the only one who sees what we have in our collections. We have some really cool things, and I hate when I'm the only one that gets to see those really cool things, so frequently I'll be you know, sharing with our staff, and we are continually working on creating resources so the public can access them, not only by visiting the museum, but from your home as well. And we pretty much try to, to create access to our collections through cataloging and digitization, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But we couldn't do that without our wonderful volunteers and interns. I have a really great group of um, people that work with me in the archives. And through them, we're able to digitize and catalog thousands of items from our collections every single year. And we wouldn't be able to create the resources that I'll talk about without them. And then the last component of my job is advocacy and outreach. So doing programs like this and you know, really finding creative ways that we can get our history and our archives out in the community. So what can you find in the museum's archives and collections? So uh, to put it simply, you can find historical material and objects related to Rochester and Rochester Hills. Uh, so this includes a wide variety of items. Uh, we have about 5,000 archival photographs in our collections. We have maps. We have a lot of documents, letters, correspondences, diaries, um, scrapbooks, all kinds of things like that from local residents. Um, and those are really valuable. Uh, we have different objects. You'll see some of those on display in our dairy barn. Uh, we, of course, have a lot of um, items from the Van Heusen family as well. Uh, one of our most valuable collections, which I'll talk about a little more, is our newspaper collection. So it really lets us know what was going on in the community. Uh, so there's a lot of really interesting things, and every year our collection is growing. And um, one of the things that we also do is we work with local organizations to store their records. So there's so many local organizations like Rochester Avon Historical Society, Rochester Historical Commission, uh, Rochester Garden Club, um, and you know their history is so important to our local history. So we want to create an opportunity to you know store and preserve their um, material as well. So what I'm going to be talking about for the rest of the time is just kind of doing an overview of some of our research resources. So most of these you can actually access from home, uh, so you don't have to come into the museum. You can uh, search online. And then I'm also going to be highlighting a few things in our collection so you can see uh, you know, some of the cool items that we have. And I do have a table up here with a few of the items that I'm going to be talking about, so you're welcome to come take a peek. 
And I want to mention, so we just updated our um, archive section of the website. And uh, if there is one website that I want you to remember from this whole presentation, it's this one. It's rochesterhills.org slash MUS archives. And so this website, it acts sort of as a landing page, and all of the resources that I mentioned today, you can access from there. And it'll have a little more information and then more instructions. Go ahead. Is there any way that you can get up the list of the websites? Yeah, I can. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, I can, um, maybe I can uh, print off a copy of something. You can also pick up, we have um, our newest archives newsletter found in collection, and it does, um, it does mention some of these links and that kind of thing in there as well. Yep. All right, so let's get started with um, our first resource, which is our collection catalog. So. In order to keep track of the thousands of items in our collection, uh, the museum has um, a online collection catalog. And uh, so it's called Pass Perfect. That's the software that we use. It's a pretty standard software across smaller museums. And it's essentially just a database. So we try to create catalog records for each item in our collection. And they're similar to a library catalog record, so it provides information about that item. So it might have the date, you know, the condition of the item. It'll tell a little bit about the history of the item, maybe who it came from, how it's significant to the area. Uh, and then usually there's a photo of the item as well. And so we use this internally, and we have about 13,000 catalog records. And the nice thing is we're able to make a portion of this available online for the public to search, and we're constantly adding more. So right now we actually have over 3,000 catalog records um, available for you to browse online. And uh, so this is a really great resource if you just kind of want to get an idea of what's in the museum's collections. You can search you know, a particular person, a place, um, a business. You can also uh, browse and request archival photos on there. Um, I'll show you a little bit how to do that. Uh, we do have a selection of our digitized material, so you can actually see a digital reproduction of uh, a specific item. And then our newest thing that we are um, working on is our people biographies. So there is, if you're creating a catalog record, so for example, if it was J.J. Snook's diary, uh, you can tag him in that record, and then we can actually add biographical information, and then it um, allows us to do a little bit more research and document the important people in our community. Uh, so we're slowly building that resource, but uh, it's a really great addition. And so I'm going to show you the landing page that I mentioned. This is uh, rochesterhills.org slash MUS archives. And so this is what it looks like when you go to it. Um, there's a bunch of different buttons, and um, you can um, kind of navigate from here. Um, we have some um, forms that you can fill out if you want to donate an artifact or if you want to ask a question. Uh, you can just you know, get some general information about the archives. And if you wanted to access the collection catalog, we have the button right here, and you'll click on that, and it's going to take you to the home page, which looks a little bit like this. And uh, so there's a few different ways that you can uh, look through this. Uh, you can go to some of these catalogs. So in our collections, we have archives, so two-dimensional um, sort of paper documents. We have um, library, which is, you know, books, things like that. We have uh, three-dimensional objects, and then we have photos. So if you just wanted to look for photos, you can click on uh, the tab on the left right there, and then you'll see all of the catalog records for our photos. And my favorite feature is this random images up here. So this is just going to bring up uh, a bunch of random images from our collections. It's really fun if you're not looking for anything in particular and you just kind of want a little surprise. Um, I am uh, often surprised at what pops up. Even though I've been working here for almost eight years, I, there's still things that I don't know we have in our collection. Uh, so thankfully, we're able to have them documented in this software here. And then if you're interested in looking at any of these items, you can just click on it, and it's going to take you to the catalog record for it. It's just got to take a second to load. Hopefully, it won't take too long. OK, there we go. Um, and so usually, uh, there are a few fields. 
So with this one, um, it's a uh, photo album, it looks like, and so we have this really long um, description of it, um, and we can see it's from um, a particular collection, and then we also have some photos of it. So if you were interested in requesting an archival photo, uh, what you can do is you can click on the photo in the catalog record, and it's going to pop it up right here, so you'll see just a closer up version, and then you'll go to request image, and that's going to bring up this form. Now, I do have to say, if you are wanting to request multiple photos, it might be a little cumbersome to fill out this form repeatedly. You are more than welcome to just reach out to me directly, uh, and then, you know, if you let me know the catalog number, which is at the top of each catalog record, I'm happy to help um, get those photos to you. And then also see if we have anything else in our collection. Yeah, so the, the catalog number, um, it is, uh, we call them um, accession numbers in archives. So yeah, it's ac exactly that. So for this one, 2013 would um, represent that it was donated in 2013, and it was the 27th item donated that year. So um, when it was the 27th item, that doesn't necessarily mean individual items. Sometimes we'll have things um, donated as a whole collection, um, but that kind of helps us decipher things a little bit, and then we can look at kind of the provenance and, and who donated it, and that often um, adds more value to the collection as well. Yeah, go ahead. So I'm gonna, I can talk a little bit about that um, when I get to our Oakland County Historical Resources. Um, and I actually, on the landing page um, over here, I do have this section that is local history research guides and tips. So um, property searches, you know, the history of someone's home, that is the most common uh, request that I get. Uh, so I actually created a little document on here that lists all of the resources I use when I'm doing that kind of research. So um, you're welcome to look at that, um, or you can always reach out to me. But um, pretty much with any of these, um, the databases that I'm going to show you, if you put in just like the address, you can kind of see what pops up um, for a particular property. Uh, you can also, I've had success looking for um, the owners of that property. So uh, for example, later on I'm going to be doing a search for um, 1481 Dutton. And once you do that search, you'll see newspaper articles for the Fox family. And then if you do more research into the Fox family, it kind of helps you um, flush out what you know about um, that property as well. Uh, but yeah, this page is um, sort of one of our newest pages. So I have a document that's just general resources. So this is pretty much everything that I use in our research. You know, I didn't want to be hoarding all of these great resources. You know, we have a lot of stuff that is um, you know, specific to the museum, but there's a lot of great resources that the museum doesn't own. Um, and then even, you know, the Rochester Hills Public Library has some great resources as well. So I wanted to compile them so that you can have access to all of that. And so this is where I have a house and building research guide. So I would recommend um, checking that out for sure, um, because that will give you kind of more detailed um, how you can search the different things for a property. And so going back to the collection catalog. Um, if you were searching for something in particular, I recommend going over here to advanced search. So this is just going to give you a little bit more um, control over what you're searching so you're not just getting random images. And so there's going to be some fields down here. And I recommend really just using the description field. Um, every museum is different, but we primarily put all of our information into that description field. So if you're searching for a person's name, you know, um, a location, um, an event, I would um, put it in here. So I'm just going to do a test search. Uh, we're just going to search for Civil War and see what pops up. One thing that's really helpful is if it's a, a two-word phrase or anything um, over one word is to put it in quotation marks. That's going to search the full phrase together. And then it's going to show up with anything that um, has Civil War in the description. So the museum has quite a few things in our collection. Um, we have some books. We have some objects. And we also have some photographs. I want to highlight uh, one of the... Um, I think most valuable and most interesting things we have. And those are the diaries of J.J. Snook, 
So J.J. Snook lived um, Avon and Rochester Road. He had Overlook Farm, and uh, he was a Civil War soldier, and we have his diaries, and I actually have one sitting up here. They're very small. They can fit pretty much in the palm of your hand. And the really great thing is we recently digitized them. So if you click on the catalog record for any of his diaries, you can actually download a PDF and see the entries. So it's essentially like you're looking through his diary, just you don't have to actually be holding the item, which is really fantastic. And you know this is obviously great because you don't have to schedule an appointment and come talk to me at the museum, but it's also great uh, preservation-wise. So you, know, you can imagine if we had um, people researching with that diary every single week, there would be a lot of wear and tear on it. So this is just a really great way to not only provide access, but preserve something very valuable in our collection. So apparently it's going to take a little, uh, a little while to download, so um, I will let that keep going. But um, essentially you can just see every single page that he wrote on. And um, we actually have a passage where he talks about um, President Abraham Lincoln's assassination. And um, he was very passionate about it. And it's just really interesting to see kind of that you know, national event through kind of a local history lens. So I think that's really the value of some of these things in here. And, and we'll find with the newspapers as well as we get that um, local history version of some major events in history. And so that is just a quick little intro to our collection catalog. I would definitely recommend checking this out, um, especially if you're not interested in doing specific research, you just want to pop around and see what we have in here. Uh, it's always um, fun to, to kind of make connections and to kind of see um, maybe you're familiar with a business that used to be in downtown or something like that. And sometimes we have really interesting things in our collections. Um, one of the things that I love is we have um, a little collection of shopping bags from um, old grocery stores and shops. And we have some of them on display in the dairy barn. And that's always really fun because those are the kinds of things that I think people remember. As you know, they used to shop at. I think there's one for Curly's. Was that a, a grocery store? So different things like that. So it's, it's really um, fun to see, uh, to see those things. All right. So um, you know, on our online collection catalog, you can access some digitized material. But where we have a lot of our digitized stuff, it's actually the Oakland County Historical Resources website. So it's a consortium of libraries, museums, and historical societies who are making digitized historical material uh, from Oakland County searchable and accessible to the public. Uh, so this is a really great way. When you digitize um, a lot of material, it uh, uses up a lot of space. So it's not always easy to get online. So this is a really great way to collaborate with other organizations in Oakland County and then share it with the public. And I wanna take a moment just to explain what digitized means. I often find that people don't always know the difference between catalog records and digitization. It does get very confusing, you know, it all has to do with online kinds of things. But when something is digitized, it basically just means that it's converted into a digital format. So unlike the catalog records that we saw, it's basically a digital reproduction. So, you know, with a diary, you could, you know, scroll through each page and see exactly what's on it, whereas a catalog record is just going to show you information about it. And the great thing about um, OCHR, as it's shortened, is uh, you can search for things that are related to this area, but also all of Oakland County. Oftentimes, you might be searching for something that has to do with Avon Township, but it might pop up in a neighboring uh, newspaper, things like that, because there was often a lot of crossover. And uh, you can also create an account on there, and then you can save material, favorite material, and download it. So it's just a really um, accessible way to um, you know, search for Oakland County history. And the museum, we've been working really hard, uh, thanks to a lot of our volunteers and interns, as I mentioned. Um, and we have uh, 4,500 um, items digitized and available on this website. So uh, if you were to go to our landing page here, um, we do have uh, this digitized collections tab, and this is going to actually show you basically a uh, list of what we have on the website. So the Oakland County Historical Resources is, um, you can find it at oaklandcountyhistory.org. And then we just made it a little bit easier. So if you wanted to just search one of these collections we have on here, you can click on the title and it's going to take you directly there. But I will show you um, a little bit of what this um, site can do. So 
you can browse by uh, books, newspapers, postcards, things like that, kind of like with the collection catalog. I recommend going to advanced search, which is, hold on one second, I'm not sure what it's doing, um, but it's to the left of the search bar. And um, that's gonna take you to where you can have more fields and you can search for specific things. Okay, let's try this again. And the one really great thing that we do have on our um, on OCHR is our newspaper collection, and I will talk a little bit about that um, in a second. But uh, it's probably the the resource that I use the most. You know, the uh, the newspapers chronicles pretty much everything that was going on in the community, uh, and it's I always call it like the Facebook um, of that time period because since you know this area was so rural they were reporting on things that you definitely wouldn't report on today in a newspaper. So you have, you know, like someone visiting from out of town or someone is sick or, you know, just really small things. But you're really able to get a feel for what was happening in the community. And it's even just fun to browse. It's, you, can, um, you can find some really um, uh, interesting stories on there. So it looks like this is just not gonna work for me. So I'll try one more time. And then we will just move on. And I do have instructions on uh, that website that will show you um, how to search. Um, it can be a little bit confusing. And with all of this, if this is all you know too much for you and you just don't you, you don't feel like doing that that research, you can always give me a call. I'm happy to to help do some research and see what we have. Um, all right, so it's back up and running. So if we go to the advanced search. Uh, on the left-hand side, hopefully it'll take us to this page, which it does, and then we're gonna look at these, um, these fields on the side. So if you just wanted to search the museum's collection, you can go over here to source, and then we will hit Rochester Hills Museum at Van Hoosen Farm, and it's gonna populate everything that the museum has uploaded. Uh, so uh, there are a variety of things. We have photographs, we have newspapers, we have some teacher uh, school register books, which is really interesting. And um, I'm gonna click on one of those and we can take a look at that. And uh, the cool thing with OCHR is you can save and download the material. So if you wanted to save a document that's on here, you're welcome to download it to your computer. And it just sometimes makes it a little bit easier so you don't have to go back to that database. All right, so it looks like this is gonna be a little bit difficult, but I can, I can explain a little bit from here. So if you were looking for something in particular, you would just type it into the search bar up at the top. Again, quotations is great, so if you were looking for Bertha Van Hoosen, you would put that in quotation marks, and then anything with Bertha mentioned in it is gonna pop up. And the really cool thing is with our newspapers is it actually picks up words that are in the actual newspapers. So it's not just what's in the description. Um, and that is so valuable and it makes uh, the research process way more efficient. So as you can imagine, if you had to just flip through each page, that would take a really long time. So this just um, kind of cuts your research time in half. So I'm gonna let this load for a second and we are gonna pop back over and I'll talk about our digitized newspapers. So uh, a few years back, this was actually one of the first projects I worked on when I first started here was getting our digitized newspaper collection on OCHR. So we had a vendor that um, helped us digitize them and we were slowly kind of uploading them. So on here I have a list of the local newspapers we have. So we have Rochester Eccentric from 1972 to 1992, Rochester Clarion 1974, 1975, and 1997, and then the Rochester era from 1873 to 1949, as well as the Avon News and Shopper from 1955. Now, we don't have every single issue. Um, unfortunately, we're missing um, anything from 1918 and 1919, which is um, a huge gap, and we hope to, to fill it in one day. We hope those lost newspapers um, make their way to us. Uh, but even with there being gaps, it really is um, a really fantastic way to kind of um, create a time capsule of the community. 
And you can pretty much use the newspapers to search just about anything. Um, you know, people, businesses, schools, um, houses and neighborhoods. So the one thing, um, the question was like property research. So what I will do, um, I will sh I'll show you this in a second, but um, I'll just type in the address and then I'll see what pops up and we can go from there. But this is that um, school register book. So um, this will show you kind of the first page if it's a multi-page document. And then you can go over to um, multi-page to scroll through the whole thing. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to load. But there are some options if you wanted to download it. You can hit this arrow button up at the top. Uh, this I button is just going to give you some more information about it as well. It's also going to have a direct link down here to um, this particular item, which is really great if you want to save that in your research, because the link that's at, at the top is a little bit long, so that might not be the easiest to save uh, in your own documents. But um, once this loads, it's going to let you scroll through each page of that school register, which is really great. And I am going to... What is a school register? So it's basically like an attendance record, essentially. Uh, it's it's an attendance record, so for a particular class, I'm not sure which um, class this was for, but it'll have like the teacher's name on it, and then it'll have um, every student that was in her class, and they're really interesting. We um, pulled out some for Stony Creek Village, um, for the Stony Creek Schoolhouse, and it was really interesting to see the list of names. It was actually um, valuable to us to, kn to understand who was living in the village at that time, because sometimes it's difficult, you know, we have census records, things like that, but it's hard to have that, you know, full picture of who is here, but by looking through the kids its names we were able to see okay this family was here and then what was also really interesting is there was a pattern of students going to the Stony Creek Schoolhouse and then becoming teachers and teaching at the Stony Creek Schoolhouse so that was really fun to see that little bit of a tradition it doesn't have their addresses no but based off of um, the uh, what school they went to, what one-room schoolhouse, you can kind of have an idea of where they lived because it would have been kind of the nearby community. So for like Stony Creek School over here, that would have been anybody that was living in Stony Creek Village at that time. Yeah? Oh, yeah? Yeah, we can definitely talk about it. It's always great. We have um, we have a lot of items that are from the, um, I would say, like 1800s, uh, early 1900s. But we're actually, um, we have kind of a gap where the, the newer history of Rochester Community Schools, we don't really have. And we actually had, um, it was, it started with, I think, Van Hoosen Junior High School. Right, Pat? Was it Van Hoosen? They were looking for when they opened to students. And we didn't have a lot in our collections, but um, Alice Sorrell, who was the Van Hoosen Farm um, bookkeeper and secretary, she was a close friend of Sarah Van Hoosen Jones, she saved just about everything. And um, miraculously, in her collection, she actually had a napkin from the dedication of Van Hoosen Junior High, and she had all these programs and different things like that. So it's, it's that stuff that you wouldn't think would be helpful, but yeah, we definitely um, come talk to me afterwards and we can, um, we can talk about it. So since this isn't loading, I am just going to try, we'll try to get um, just the normal site up and running. And then I just wanted to do a quick search for um, a address just to show you kind of what that looks like, if it'll work. Now, I, I promise that normally it does work, and it's not this, <laughs> it's not this difficult. Uh, but, you know, of course, technology does not always cooperate. Okay, I'm going to let that load, and then I will talk about our next, um, well, actually, I'll talk a little bit about how we use uh, the uh, newspapers in particular. So we've had a couple really um, fun things happen over the past couple years, and we are able to learn more about some of the items in our collection. So I was doing some research in the newspapers, and I kept seeing all of these mentions of May Axford and her night blooming cactus. And it was something that happened every single year. The cactus would bloom for one night a year, 
and she would invite other uh, people, her friends in Rochester, to come see it. And it was from like 1908 to 1948 that I found all of these newspaper articles. So of course that piqued my interest, and I was, was thinking, what do we have in our collections on May? You know, do we have anything? And I did a search in our collection catalog, and I happened to find this photo on the screen, which is of um, May, with what I think is one of her beloved plants. But it was just a really fun way to kind of connect the dots. And the really interesting thing is the photo, all it said was, you know, May Axford, and then I think um, I can't remember what her first name is, but she was a Plassey. So it just had their names and it didn't have anything else. But it was a fun way that we could add this story and add more value to this photograph. And this happened again, um, kind of the opposite way with another uh, photo in our collection. So you can see this photo on the screen here, and it's um, a group of people standing outside of a trailer. And this is on Main Street. You can actually see the home bakery building in the background. Um, I think it was Taste Right Bakery at that time. Um, and so our volunteer, Ron Megan, he was cataloging this, and there was just, again, minimal information on it. And I was you know, searching the newspapers for, of course, something completely unrelated, and I spotted this photo. So it was in the April 9th, 1949 issue of the Rochester Era. And as it turns out, is that um, unit that they're standing outside was um, providing free x-rays to the community. So it would kind of pop around, so it would go to some of the schools, it stopped over at National Twist Drill, and it was basically a way to um, detect and combat tuberculosis. So it was Alpha R. Musson who actually was a big advocate for this, and he went around the community giving educational programs on tuberculosis. But it was a really, another again, another fun way to kind of make those connections. So this is just an example of what you can discover when you're searching our collections, and you can find those really interesting things. And the other thing that I love about local history is with some of these things, you're going to be the first person in a long time that's going to find this information or even knows about it. So, you know, really, it, it's something we can do research at the museum, but the more that everybody else helps and we can fill in more gaps and we can learn more about our local history. So let's go back and see if it's working. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to, oh, there we go. So what we'll do is we'll do a quick search on 1481 Dutton. Um, I just clicked Rochester Hills Museum as the source over here, so it just searches our collection. Um, and again, it's going to pop up with everything in our collection. And then we'll search right here. I often don't include road or street just because uh, it sometimes, depending on how it's mentioned in the newspaper, it won't come up. So I try to be simplify it as much as possible. And it's probably going to come up with a lot of newspaper articles. Sometimes there might be a photo. Um, but um, once it loads, there's one uh, particular newspaper article that I want to show you. Um, so we'll just, we'll just let it go over there. And um, I am going to pop over and talk a little bit about our archival collections. So we actually, within our collections, we actually have um, a lot of material on the address that I was just talking about, 1481 Dutton. It was the Fox family who lived there, and we have a collection of material from them. And so within the museum's archives, we have dozens of archival collections. They might be for a particular business or from a particular resident. And these are really great because um, they're just kind of a variety of material. And so we have, um, a lot of finding aids on these. And so a finding aid is, is basically just a guide to that collection. So we can have a collection that can be one small box like this one up here, or it can be 20 boxes. So when you're dealing with a collection that's 20 boxes um, big, it's a lot easier to have a finding aid, aid so you know exactly where um, to go for something in particular. So we are going to check that out. So again, on this landing page, you can go to archival collections. And um, once it loads, it's going to uh, show you, it's going to have a little um, information about uh, what catalog records are, what digitized means, that kind of stuff that I already went over. And then it's going to have a list of some of the collections that we have. And it'll have links to a finding aid, it'll have links to, um, to catalog uh, records, digitized material. So this is just another kind of easier way that you can access some of our collections. 
Uh, so I want to highlight uh, the Howard Farmer family collection. We actually had an intern recently who helped us kind of resurvey this collection, add more historical material. And so um, this collection contains a variety of things. So there are um, yearbooks, there's Rochester High School stuff, Blue Star Mothers, uh, National Twist Drill items. So that just kind of shows how one person can have so many different um, connections to different parts of the community. And so it's gonna take you back to our collection catalog here. And then you're going to click on the finding aid and it'll download it. And um, I can kind of show you what that looks like. Um, some of it is going to be, you know, information that you probably won't use, but the content list is the most important. So let's see if that will, that should open up a lot quicker. All right, so here is uh, that finding aid. We just have kind of basic information about it. We also include a biographical history of the person or the business. And so that's really great because you can kind of understand the collection a little bit more. And this is what our intern really was working on because sometimes the collection just seems very disjointed and you don't understand why there's all of these different pieces here. But once you start doing the research, you can kind of see how it all fits together. And then we can even start identifying people in, in photos and um, adding more of that really important information onto it. And uh, down at the bottom, there is going to be that content list. So it's gonna have the what is in each box, what is in each folder, that kind of thing. So if you were looking for Rochester High School stuff, we have, of course, this is gonna pop up now. <laughs> um, we're gonna have some yearbooks in here. Uh, folder eight has Rochester High School ephemera, so stuff like that. So this is just one way that you can kind of access things. And then if you're interested in looking at something in particular, you can always give, a, um, give me a call or send me an email and we can schedule an appointment and you can come on site and take a look at that stuff. So um, that is our archival collections that you can um, kind of browse. We are continually processing more and more collections, so we'll be adding back. And that's that's really with all of our collections on here is we're kind of continually adding more resources. So definitely check back, um, you know, frequently to see what we've added. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over because this decided to download. Um, this was that diary, JJ Snook's diary. And so as you can see, it is uh, just um, exactly what you would see on the pages. Um, it's really, I think it's really powerful when you start to see their handwriting and you can kind of read uh, what was happening on each day. And the interesting thing is uh, we'll sometimes have diaries from different people on the same year and it's always interesting to kind of compare and contrast to see what was happening in one person's life um, versus another person's life. So that is um, a little bit of what you can find on OCHR and on um, our collection catalog. Now, I'm going to go back over here to our um, Oakland County history where I was doing that search for um, 1481 Dutton. Um, so uh, the nice thing about this is you can um, rearrange your search results. So we're going to go over here to column format, and I'm going to rearrange it by date. And there's one particular uh, newspaper article that I want to highlight and it just can show you how it'll take you directly to the page and it'll show you exactly where your search term is. And now with some of our, uh, some of the uh, more recent newspapers, they're gonna be a little bit larger just because they had more pages. So um, it's gonna take a little bit longer to load. But you can see this is the Rochester era from 1944. Um, so it's always, the, the first page is always interesting to see kind of the highlights of what was going on in the community. And um, it's really great when they started adding the photos and everything like that. But the 1481 Dutton actually shows up right here on the first page. And it was the uh, North Avon Farm raided by chicken thieves on Sunday. So William Fox Farm loses 50 Plymouth Rock hens. And then it mentions the William Fox Farm, 1481 Dutton. So that's where, when you're doing property research, sometimes if they're mentioned, it'll, you know, it'll pop up with the name of who uh, lived there, and then you can kind of do research from there. 
but uh, it is really interesting to um, kind of see how they refer to things. A lot of times they'll refer to a place by like who the, the original owner was or who the previous owner was. So that's where uh, it's sometimes helpful to research, um, you know, what the farm name was as opposed to the address. And you can also just scroll through the rest of the newspaper to kind of see what was going on. And the really fantastic thing is we actually have William Fox's diary in our collection, as well as the diary of, I believe it was his daughter, Helen Fox. And we have um, one of our volunteers that's currently transcribing it, so um, it's more accessible. And we have her diaries from the 1890s, as well as from the 1940s, so kind of a, a long span of time. And so that is a gist of what you can find online and just kind of a, a quick overview of some of the things that we have in our collections. But if you can't find uh, what you're looking for online, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. I'm uh, so happy to help you know, find anything. I really love researching it. Helps me learn more about the community. And I'm able to, you know, dig into files that we don't have digitized, we don't have online. Uh, and um, I encourage you to reach out. And of course, if you're interested in donating anything, um, you know, give me a call. Um, we primarily uh, accept things that are related to Rochester, Rochester Hills. But um, if you have other things, you can always give me a call and I can offer suggestions for other places to donate. And um, if you're interested, you can pick up our archives newsletter, which is over here. Um, we just got it printed, and it's a really great publication. Some of our volunteers and interns write articles about the projects that they're doing um, in the archives. You know, sometimes what we're doing doesn't really get um, seen by other people as much. You see kind of the end product. So this is just a fun way for them to talk about their projects. So you're more than welcome to pick one of those up. All right, well, thank you so much for coming, and thank you for bearing with all the technical difficulties. And like Pat said, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or need help with any research.